Well, welcome back to River Talk. She's been on before, and now she's back. She is the uh, boy. She got guts. <laughs> Yeah, and so do we. Yeah, really? Uh, Caroline Improv. And uh, women, your mother warned you about mm. podcasts. It's the one, mm. the only Gina Trimarco. Hello. Good morning, gentlemen. Gentlemen? <laughs> I did that on purpose. Well, we started at a high point. I wanted you to, I wanted yeah, you to yeah. feel good. I feel good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. I, I get up in the morning and I say, hey, fella, let's have a good day. <laughs> does, 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 do, you, do you get an answer back? No. No. No, I'm in and out. I don't just want gonna, any second opinions. That's a pride. That's a good idea. Yeah, just right yeah. in there. Good so, idea. how are things at Carolina Improv? Well, um, that's a really interesting question. You know, the doors are currently locked. Really? At Carolina Improv, yeah. For some reason. I know a locksmith. Hmm. Mm, good. You know, my daddy was a locksmith. Really? Is that yeah, right? but he also worked for the mob, but that's another story. Okay. So. Um, <laughs> he should also work for the mob. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> really? Our doors are currently locked because the our sweet governor still has not given us permission to open the doors. Is there like a precedent set anywhere? I mean, are they doing improv in some other places? I mean, outside of dealing with uh, with uh, rioters, uh, there's a lot of improv going. Well, on. as you know, every state it's you know it's a state by state situation, mm-hmm. and there's only three true improv theaters in the state of South Carolina. Ours here in Myrtle Beach and then one in Greenville and one in uh, Charleston. So we're all in the same situation of of being shut down along with all other small theaters like Theater Republic and Atlantic Stage and GTS Theater. Like we're all in the same situation that for some reason it's very dangerous to go to. You can't move outside? We could move outside. There are challenges with that like rain. Rain, <laughs> South Carolina heat. Well, then you do it with an umbrella. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, let me get right on it. Well, I got to go now. I'm just trying to. I'm a problem solver. <laughs> well, and then you can improv with a mask on. That's all. <laughs> well, you know, we, we prepped. We're like totally prepared oh, yeah. to open. And so we were going to open with face shields. Oh, I got you. So we thought that would be, yeah. so you could still hear us, but we thought that would actually be kind of funny. Yeah, that would be. Because, you know, I like be, it. we would be funny looking. So it'd be at least a sight gag. But we could go outside. It's just where are we going to go? Are yeah. we going to get the audience? Are they going to stay seated? It's not like we're a band and you could just sit, sit back and enjoy. We need you to interact with us. So we, we kind of need to, like, corral you into seats. Right. That's part of the thing you're challenge. starting to start your own country like Chop or something out there, you know, walking around talking and doing your improv. Mm-hmm. These people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking to each other. Look at them. <laughs> They're idiots. <laughs> we could get locked up. Well, back in the old days, <laughs> uh, in February... Um, <laughs> Oh, I remember yeah. the old days. They were so... Back in my day, we opened the doors for business. <laughs> yeah. What was it like? What, what was uh, improv like at your place? Before before the COVID? B- yeah. Before the Rona? Yeah. Um, we were busy. We were super busy. And most of our guests that come see shows are tourists. So mm-hmm. we were having a really good beginning of the year like it was really good and same with our classes because we teach improv classes so that was doing improv can be taught improv can be i want to say inspired because we all have we all have the ability to improvise we're born with those skills just think about children and how they react and respond oh sure with you know especially when they can't even speak they're able to they're really in the moment paying attention and listening and observing and they're able to communicate with you without speaking well, if you can lie, you can improv. <laughs> because um, that, yeah, I mean, really, yeah, really, yes. If you're, if you, if you're trying, well, there's you a couple lie of dots somebody, I never quite connected. <laughs> well, look, if you lie to somebody, wow. you're actually doing improv. Wow, yeah. it sounds like you're a really good improviser. Bad actor. But <laughs> yeah. So I was we going to talk to you about that last movie. You <laughs> Thanks. Mm-hmm. I know, man. I know. So we don't. Not. We don't really. We don't really teach it. We we help bring it out of okay. people. We facilitate it. We get you to practice it because it's a it's a it's a brain muscle kind of thing. So you, we're we're exercising your brain muscle. Okay. So uh, you're you're calling Columbia on every day. Every other day. Every other day. Yeah, the governor loves me. I don't know. I don't know if he knows me, but his people know me. 
I think they're tired of my calls between calling his office, Accelerate SC, Department of Commerce. I've got per- people's cell phone numbers. I'm the I'm that person. They're like, oh no, it's that Italian calling again. <laughs> 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 I think that's the story I make up in my mind. Yeah. You tell yeah. me about your dad. My daddy's in the mob. Mm, that right. doesn't hold as much weight <laughs> up there in Colombia. No, as and he's to, he's though. not with us anymore. So it's, I'm sorry. He can. Well, he was much older than my mom, so he's been gone for a while. Okay. So he was. If he were alive, he'd be a hundred. And look how young I am. So my dad passed in uh, 2018, the early part of 18. Oh. And uh, I learned I learned impro- how to improv from him. That's but, awesome. Yeah, he was a used car salesman. Oh. <laughs> Well, I mean that is that's, perfect. That is improv right there. My that's dad honest. made me work in flea markets when I was a kid. I did some of that too. And yeah. like when we were ten, working in a flea market. Now, little did we know the things that we were selling could have gotten us in trouble as adults. Oh wow! You know, members only jackets. Yeah, and had some of those uh, short ash jeans, golf shirts yeah. with the removable crocagator. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, you put it exactly. on the sleeve or anywhere you wanted to put it. Yeah, right. I remember that. Yeah, look at you. Yeah. yeah. Look at you. I worked for the same outfit one time. A guy knocked off a truck. You wore the Just same no outfit kid. one time? No, no. I worked for oh, an outfit. You work, you work. Yeah, work. Th- these guys had knocked off a truck. Now, I, hate to, I can admit it now because they're all dead. <laughs> But they knocked off Bring a truck. <clears throat> yeah, it, it, this is knocked great. off a truck. Yeah, but this is great. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I had conver- uh, comforters and all this stuff that they had, had ripped off this truck, and we took them down to Charleston to the slave market and sold them. Yeah, because that's like a huge outdoor bazaar last time I went. Yeah, we made some money. I didn't know I was selling hot items. Didn't care. I was well, making comforters some are hot items. I mean, yeah, that's what, oh, yeah. That's what pretty warm. Off, yeah, yeah, rather warm. Shelf. I think my dad was real smart. He had his children selling hot items. Less jail time. And statute of limitation, I think, is pretty gone. Now, yeah, so I, I would I hope so. Let's get to spend more time together. Well, I hope so. No matter where it is. <laughs> Behind bars, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but but there's something to be said because your dad sounds like he was a mover and a shaker always had yeah you know hustles accepted yeah. now I mean if you yeah. call a hustler oh, yeah. oh yeah we, we always I mean I always call my dad a hustler yeah and people would look at me like now hustler's an okay word but yeah. my dad taught me the you know how to hustle how to work how to you know you know all kidding aside despite the fact that you know maybe his stuff was illegal he did teach us the value of working hard and being loyal right it's a big deal yeah. It was hustle, the big hustle. Characteristic of an Italian, I guess. <laughs> you either open a spaghetti house, or you steal. I mean, or both, or both, right? Or you own everybody else's <laughs> business, <laughs> or you have a hand, or, in it. or all of that. <laughs> I mean, I I won't go into a whole lot of detail, but I did have uh, I did have a cousin who owned a hot dog stand, and then there were other things going on besides selling hot dogs. No, oh, yeah. they usually are. So, mm-hmm. You know what's I, in a I hot won't. dog. Oh. Yeah, we don't need to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, it's crazy. That's another story. You know, we we were involved in different businesses growing up, and, and you kind of go in and, and, and help out businesses. You're working yeah. the circuit around the country. Oh, yeah. I mean, right now that's kind of on hold, sort of, because I can't travel. Right. But we go into organizations, and we take – improv is a, is a tool. So we go into organizations, and we help them be faster on their feet and more agile. Now more than ever, companies are like – you know, really perplexed on what to do with working from home and how do we go back and create that new normal and some people still stay at home and work. So we go in and we help them get better again at communication, collaboration, how do we work together, how do we, and really big right now, how do we solve problems? Like this is the biggest problem ever that we're dealing with in this pandemic and it has stifled people, it has paralyzed people. So what we're doing right now is we're going back in and helping businesses get back on track. How do we bring our employees back? So we're doing more consulting than we are doing training right now and how to, and my background is business and always has been. So a lot of times people have looked at me like, oh, you're the improv lady, you're the funny lady. No, I've run businesses my whole life. I've been a turnaround person for businesses. I just happen to op- also open an improv comedy theater. Mm-hmm. So so that's what we're doing right now is getting businesses back on track. And, and a lot of what we're doing is virtual because we can. It's easy. Sure. I, mean, I think every business right now is in startup mode. Just because 100%. of the way the whole routine went with, with going home, the people that yep. would pass your business, you're out of sight, out of mind. And I think now more is important. it's more important than ever 
to just get in their face and remind them who you are. If you think yep. it's too much, it's still not enough. Yeah, I, I think you hit it on the head. Cause I Did st- I? I? Yeah, well, I mean. Call me the jackhammer. Woo-hoo, this You're is, you know, you should pat yourself on the back a little bit. That was a good one. No, I knew it in a straight jacket. It was a great act. I did at Atlantic <laughs> City in '93. Yeah, you know, good improv guy. It was great. Sounds like it. But yeah, we um, we're really all in startup mode right now. All you know, it's you have to do your business differently, and that is a big piece of improv. Where you can't get stuck in your status quo. You have to be willing to fail. And to know that from the failure, something is going to innovate. Something new is going to happen. So don't be afraid of that fail. And we're all in that kind of fail place right now of how do we get out of this and turn it around? Don't freak out about it. Just do the next thing. Failure is a great thing. Failure is an awesome thing. Jack and I are very experienced at that. Look at you guys. (laughs) And look at you. (laughs) Look at how successful you are. Yeah, Yeah, look at us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Failure is a great thing, though. I think we put so much emphasis on on not failing, and and we do a disservice to our kids. Uh, Yeah. And, 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 something and to, ourselves. Something to think about is purposeful failing. Mm-hmm. And all kidding aside, like a lot of times I will look at like where, how, how's a way to fail in order to create something new. If I'm stuck with coming up with a new innovation or a new way to do things, I just kind of like sit in the failure of it. You know, the first two months of this pandemic, I didn't do a lot of reacting. People were reacting. They were taking everything online immediately. And I'm like, oh, everybody just slow down. Because emotional intelligence has to play into this, too. People are so stressed out and so paralyzed, and you need to tune into their emotions before you start making decisions. Sure. So I kind of sat back for a couple months before we made our next plans to move forward. Yeah. Well, you Soak got, it in for you a little bit. Lots of lemmings out there that uh, they, they read stuff and they want to follow. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Let's follow this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I see that happening in corporate America on certain things right now. Yeah. But you said tuning into emotions. How about tuning into podcasts? There's so many out there. You've got one. Uh, Tell me about yours. Oh, look at you. Yeah. That's why I make the big mm, buck. You make the big. <laughs> he women, knows how to dance right into I the I love next the subject, dance. I love it. Women Your Mother Warned You About is our podcast. It is a podcast about business and life and primarily for women, but men can listen to it. We do have a male co host. So, Women Your Mother Warned Poor You About. Dot com. Yeah. Yeah, but he gave us the money to get it started. So That's we a great love thing. him. Whoa. Wow, okay. We love him. Behind so every great woman is a man with a wallet. That's right. <clears throat> Something like that. Yeah. So, yeah, so that podcast, um, we're on our second season, and that's um, super fun. So, so check that out. How do I find it? Women Your Mother Warns You About dot com. I know where to find women my mother warned me about, but the podcast. <laughs> well, you can find more of us. You can find more of those. <laughs> hey, sailor. <laughs> right. Yeah, I know her. That's it, man. Yeah, Women Your Mother Warns You About dot com. And check out Spontaneous Selling dot com which is our improv um our sales training class that oh, starts sweet. actually starts tomorrow so if anybody is looking for how to get better with persuading people that can work with anything deacon it could work with you back out on the dating scene yet or yeah. who me yeah uh, i know what to say to girls okay. does it work no all right but all i know right. what to say to them <laughs> I used to. I've maybe, lost it. It's maybe, been a few yeah. years. Since maybe I've, you yeah. need to yeah, sign yeah, up. You've for lost the class. that loving I feeling. I, I have. I, I feel really like have. there's a new idea here. Maybe I need an improv for dating class. Well, I, I used to have some great lines like, uh, <laughs> "Hey, it was like to take a stride on the tide." There's a full ocean out tonight. I mean, just stupid stuff like that. But they thought, wow. hey, "This guy's funny. Yeah, I can trust him. He's funny and stupid. He's stupid, so I'll trust him." So, so yeah, that that worked for me when I was younger. Now I'm a geezer. When you're a geezer, now I can get away with a little bit more murder because I'm an older guy, you know. Oh, yeah, he's harmless. I'm harmless now. Oh. Yeah. Ain't he a cute old guy? And if your wallet's big, that works. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. A whole lot. Yeah, right. That's why I always How leave big is your wallet? a couple of bucks hanging out of my wallet when I'm walking down the street with <laughs> my shirt up. And look at there, yeah. hip national. <clears throat> That's right, buddy. Business is good. Yeah. Well, Gina, good having you with us. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're interested in getting into the world of podcasting, I know you've uh, talked about... Uh, You actually spearhead some of that as well. Yeah, we do executive produce other people's podcasts, so that's super fun. It's like you got to have one today. It's like having a website. I love executive produce. How do you All right, closer to the mic. Testing. One, two. All right, record. We're rolling. (laughs) Executive produce. There's a little more than that with me. Yeah. Now, do you generate money doing this? I mean, do you have to pay for the podcast? How does that work? She's going to have to charge you. Well, well, people people, people pay me to produce it. So, PayPal. 
Yeah, so so you, when, when you go when you when you do this and they go there they got to pay to watch the whole show. Well, right? no, you can't. Is it free? No, their po- podcasts are free, but there are different ways to monetize them. That's a whole other episode. Oh right? yeah, and I okay. don't think you got time for that today. Yeah. But we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we need to. It's yeah. crazy. I like money. Yeah, I like the revenue model. Yeah, yeah. revenue is good. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, the revenue model is great. <laughs> Hope to get me some of that on this River Talk. 23 years. I've almost, almost figured it out. <laughs> That's it, Almost. Buddy. I'm right there. I'm on the cusp. Good seeing you, Gina. Appreciate it. Good seeing it. you guys. All Thank right. you. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. Yeah. We'll be right back with more. Stay there.